holy shit, they actually did it. Corsair made a monitor, the B11ND. Oh, oh, hey, wait a second. It's not B11ND at all. It's a Xenion. So you might not remember, but the B11ND or the blind was their April Fool's joke from like 2016 or something like that. Where they basically just had an RGB all over the monitor. Uh, well, it took a few years, but it looks like they've actually made something now. That's not just a joke product. And just looking at the packaging here, it looks okay. 32 inches is a little too big for me for 1440p, but otherwise, um, specs are decent. It's like 165 hertz, IPS. Uh, I love the packaging, by the way. I love that they've actually got all this like right on here. Uh, speaking of which, what I'm really excited about is this 100% uh, Adobe RGB and sRGB color space. That's actually pretty big. And if I'm not mistaken, I think it's also 98% DCI-P3. So this is a surprisingly color accurate monitor as well, which is pretty cool. You don't really expect that um, from someone like Corsair, but hey, what do I know? There are some instructions on the top of the box for how to open this thing. Uh, I'm just gonna open it and see what happens. I'm always terrified when lifting a monitor like this. Oh, you never know when it's gonna just flop over. Come on. Luckily, we got this sweet LTT desk pad underneath. Those are back in stock. Oh, we've got a display port cable. It's probably just DP 1.4. Um, this is mini H, oh no, it's USB-C, because this thing, if I'm not mistaken, also does power charging through the back, which is nice. And I think it does HDMI or DP through USB-C, which is great if you've got a laptop. Um, power cable, bunch of clamps. This is probably for the stand. Power brick to accompany the power cable. And here's our HDMI cable. Is this 2.1? That's the real question. Everyone, high speed HDMI. Well, it says high speed with Ethernet, so we'll see, I guess. I'll probably just stick to DisplayPort. Either way, uh, lots of cables that come with it, which is nice. It sucks when you get a monitor and it's got like one DisplayPort cable or something. The stand on this thing is also super cool. Well, that's debatable. It's Depends on what kind of taste you have, I guess. But I think it looks kind of cool. I thought it looked ugly at first, but the more I looked at it, the more I thought, wow, this actually looks pretty neat. There's the bottom of this. Yeah, so this is what I'm talking about. So it's an unconventional stand. Like, you'll have a better idea once it's all put together. Um, I think it goes like this, actually. But like, look at how hefty this thing is. This is like a couple, well, maybe just one or two pounds, but it's aluminum, I'm pretty sure. And I mean, this thing isn't going anywhere. Yeah, let's check out the panel. I don't think it's curved, which at 32 inches is like kind of maybe, like 32 is, like I'm not even big on curved monitors, but once you hit 32 inches, you kind of need it to just be able to look at everything quickly. Otherwise you're like scanning your whole head back and forth. I'm pretty sure they say don't handle it. Like I just handled it where you kind of hold it by the screen a little bit, but that's okay. I like their uh, label here that most monitors have to quickly indicate features and stuff. It's just kind of nice, like the Asus ones are a little blander compared to this, but hey, look at, that, look at that sweet, sweet color that you get with Corsair. You know they love their RGB. So this thing costs about $800. For a 32 inch panel at a high refresh rate, 1440p, but not 4K, that's not terrible. Like that's not out of the realm of um, pricing of other things. You are getting much cheaper for 1440p these days. Like you can get a brand new Asus um, VG line or whatever for like, I think $300, maybe $400, 1440p, 144 Hertz. So you're really paying for the screen space. You're paying for the color accuracy though, which is really impressive again. Um, and one thing that's really cool for this thing is if you have IQ, like if you've got a like all Corsair computer with all Corsair RGB and stuff, you can hook this thing up to IQ and then you can apparently control a bunch of stuff through IQ. Let's, yeah, let's check out the back IO, I guess, before I put it on. Uh, the cable management on this thing is pretty good once you've got the stand on, but my big problem with these bottom ports is that it's a lot harder to plug into when you're kind of fumbling behind your computer and you can't see them, right? Like when you're on, when it's on the back, just kind of flat, you can just tilt, like pivot the whole thing and then plug them in. Whereas this, you've got like crank your head underneath to even see what's going on. But that's okay. It does have a navigation nipple on the back here. And then it looks like a power button, two USB-C, two USB-A, uh, display port, and then two HDMI ports. I'm not sure again, if those are 2.1 or not. Um, but since it's not 4K, I don't think you need 2.1 actually to hit uh, 120, 144 Hertz at 1440p. But I can never remember those 
kind of specs off the top of my head, so we'll find out. Let's get this on the stand. So yeah, it's got these really wicked cable management like ties back here. So you can throw everything back behind here and then just clip it down. It's got this front little kind of divot and then that's right there. Very cool. Hey, look at that. Let's screw it down. Yeah, it is heavy. I think this thing is like 10 kilos or something like that, which isn't too crazy. Like that Asus uh, PA32 UCG or UCX that we have is like 40 pounds or something crazy like that. And then it's just got your standard, I think it's vase mountable as well. Uh, it's just got those standard like hooks. Oh, that's kind of bad. The plastic was unclipped. I mean, it's not the end of the world, but a little quality control. Corsair, come on. Does it snap in? Well, it doesn't sound like it, but it's sturdy. Oh, it's got screw holes on the back. Okay, cool, that's fine. Uh, so a lot of these, when you put it on, they just like clip in. But for this guy, it's got screws, uh, which were in the bag earlier. Where'd those go? Here they are. This is an Octopus screwdriver. I was too lazy to head over to 105 and grab a proper Phillips. <laughs> the clips on most monitors are fine, but I do like the screw in just for that added level of security. Um, yeah, I can swivel. It's a little, it's a little loose when it swivels, but like that's okay. Cause I mean, once it's in position, it's not really gonna go anywhere after that. It can tilt and go up and down, of course. Amazing. Let's get the cables in now before we take it over to our computer. All right, all right. See, here's what I'm talking about though. Like I can't just plug it in. I've already got to like raise it as much as I can, which it is, and then crouch down, find the, oh, luckily, you know what? Here's a nice thing though. These are all labeled. Um, one thing that's normally frustrating is you have to like actually search for the right one and look under there. Yeah, so HDMI one, HDMI two. Uh, the way to usually know if your DP is going out the right way is the clip will be on the outside part so that you can actually like press it down. So I just hit, yep, yeah, there it goes and it goes. I don't know if there's a cover for this back or not. It doesn't look like it. Oh, what's in this box? Oh yeah, okay. So um, this thing also has a bunch of Elgato support. Apparently you can get uh, like clamps and stands for this thing and you can clamp on like Elgato arms for heads, uh, microphones and cameras and stuff. So if you're super into streaming and you want like a really easy uh, clamp system for your stuff that doesn't have to weigh down anything else, you can just basically apparently like clip it right on here somehow. These are just extra little brackets for more cable management if you feel like you need it. I think two is probably fine. Although I don't like how loose they are. I wish you could like lock them in place somehow because this guy's just gonna keep sliding down. Admittedly, I do kind of already wish there was a pass through out the top. So, I mean, I guess you can't because of uh, the up and down uh, mechanism, but I really wish you could like pass through here first and then put it through these cable, these uh, like cable tie down kind of things. Because as it stands, I'm gonna like pull it out and maybe I'm doing this wrong, but I don't think so. But I'm gonna pull it out and clip it down. There we go. Oh, yeah, see, it fell down. Even so, I do really like this system. Oh, okay, and then like once you have cables in, pass through here. Definitely uh, don't do what I did and plug it in first. Cable manage this first, because this brick is not gonna fit through here at all. Yeah, this not staying up is really killing me. Like, on a personal level, it is just killing me. Here. It's like it's a really good idea, they just didn't execute it as well as they probably could have. <laughs> yeah, you're not going anywhere now. Green tape to the rescue. Thanks, Corsair. I kind of wish the screen came with a peel. Um, I guess that's another complaint point is that I don't see any kind of peel on here. And yes, it was packed nicely, but most higher end monitors come with like a really nice, like thin styrofoam kind of that goes across the front or at least a peel to just protect the display a little bit better. So we're gonna go game on this Corsair Xenion monitor, but first a word from our sponsors, Jackery. Thanks to Jackery for sponsoring this video. Their Explorer 1500 portable power station has enough juice to keep all your devices powered and connected. Its huge 1500 watt hour capacity and 1800 watt output rate allows up to seven devices plugged in simultaneously. That's a lot of devices. It takes only four hours to charge up from zero to 80%. Check out the Explorer 1500 at the link below and get 10% off with code Linus Tech Tips. Okay, I love the stand, but now it's problematic because it's huge. Oh, oh, I can't even see anything. 
Right, that's a huge desk footprint. Am I good? Yes, almost. There's something like stupid about it, but pretty at the same time, if that makes sense. It's hard to explain. It's one of those things where it's like a matter of taste. Either you like it or you don't. And if you can organize your desk around this monitor stand, I think you could actually make something look really cool, especially if you've got like a brushed aluminum keyboard and like some, like a gunmetal like mouse pad or something like that. I don't know. I think, I think you can make a really cool aesthetic out of it, but let's get it set up and then we'll run some games and see how it actually performs. Booted right up displayed flawlessly, so that's always a plus. Didn't have to fight with any settings or anything like that. Um, let's check and see what it's actually displaying at. Like I said, I wanna know if it's going to actually go to 165 by itself or if that's like an overclock feature. Oh no, yeah, native 165. So I mean, it's 164.835, whatever. There's a lot of monitors that do that. Yeah, it does 8-bit color, doesn't do 10-bit. I think that's our, let's, yeah, just RGB full. Can't change the output color. That's okay. 165 hertz, that's good enough for me. The more I use these 32 inches at work, the more I'm oh, just super jealous and wish I had one at home. Uh, it's got G-Sync, um, FreeSync. I mean, those are pretty much interchangeable these days. You've got all your settings and stuff here. So the navigation nipple on the back is in kind of an awkward place, but only if you're trying to let the camera see the screen, I guess, because otherwise it's just like this and it's not that bad. Um, I wish it was a little lower though. I really prefer those ones that are like right down here in the middle of the screen, but whatever. So let's see what our presets are. Changing default settings could increase power usage. That's cool. Movie, text, sRGB, creative, game, standard. All right, I don't know what any of these do, so let's just go standard. So yeah, it's got type C video, which is great because I think it also does 15 watts of power delivery, which probably isn't enough to charge your work from home laptop, but it is enough to keep it going instead of just, you know, slowly dying over the course of the day. And it's probably enough to charge your phone at least. So the cool thing though, is everything can be done through IQ apparently. Now we have to use the right version of IQ. So we've got the right uh, IQ software installed, but I think we might be missing a file or something. I can't find how to do it with the monitor itself. Maybe I'm missing something, I'm not sure. These are kind of on a timer, so sorry guys. Basically, what you should be able to do with the final product once the uh, software is released to the public as well is everything that you saw me doing in the navigation menu, you can do that in Corsair IQ, which is actually really handy, and I kind of wish more monitors did that. It's probably out of the realm of possibility for most other manufacturers because they don't also have like a fan and system like sensor slash like fan configuration software. I mean, some of them kind of do, but it's nowhere near as robust. As much as I hate that Corsair has all this proprietary stuff, but at the same time, if you only use Corsair, like if you use live in Corsair land, it does work pretty well together and you do end up with a pretty good experience. It's just, you know, you're stuck with Corsair. So that's okay. Play some Counter-Strike. We're running at like 300 FPS and for 165 Hertz, I mean, you basically want double. Oh, wow, I got smoked. You basically want double what you're actually um, displaying at to make sure that your 99 uh, lows are still like up there. Oh. No, this feels great though. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm doing really bad and I'm dying to a bunch of bots, but the refresh rate, the colors, like it all looks super nice. I, again, I wish I could actually test the color accuracy of what I'm seeing here, um, but it looks really good. And I mean, the screen space of me sitting here, this is about perfect, at least for me personally, because I can see everything. I don't have to like crane my neck and move my head to check out the corners. Like I just have to actually move my eyes to like look up, which is pretty good. But yeah, this, this stand, it's huge, like it takes up a ton of space, but I think if you fit stuff in here, like if you put like a little pencil holder there maybe, or like some figurines or something, even just this uh, Logitech keyboard actually kind of fits the aesthetic really nicely. So it's a small thing, but I really like it. I don't like the footprint, don't get me wrong, it's a little too much in terms of desk space, but this thing is actually really thin. Um, it's not the thinnest monitor I've ever seen. There's an inner bezel, that they haven't managed to get rid of. And that would be so ideal for me if they could get rid of this. And you can see the bottom is thicker and it hides that bottom bezel. Like if they could get rid of this black bar around the edge, I would be very pleased with this thing. You could put like two or three side by side for a racing rig or something like that. And it would look beautiful, it'd look amazing. Otherwise, I don't really have any major complaints. 
Uh, it's got a lot of extra features that aren't usually seen on monitors, like the charging out the back and um, that crazy color accuracy that I've mentioned way too many times at this point. But would I pay $800 for it? I think unless I lived in Corsair land and all I had was Corsair and I could use IQ for literally everything, um, I don't think I would. Like, it's nice, but for a screen this size, I really do want 4K. And I'm not even a resolution snob, like I think 1440p is more than fine, but it's a pixel per inch kind of thing. Of course, then it would be more like $1,000 probably at least. But hey, beggars can't be choosers and you can't get everything you want. So no, I wouldn't buy it for 800. But yeah, like I said, if, you, if you're a big Corsair fan, you like their products, you know, your whole PC is hooked up with Corsair fans and IQ and Commander Pro and all that stuff to keep it all synced together. Uh, this thing could be a pretty good purchase for you as long as you don't hate the stand uh, right here and the desk footprint that it's gonna take up. Thanks for watching. This is Corsair's first monitor, which it's still pretty cool for their first product. If you like this one, check out the other short circuit I did, the 390 hertz monitor from Acer. That thing's fast. It's not 400, 500 hertz fast, but 390 hertz is pretty quick.